one thing if I would like to give to the industry or I would like to empower the industry, what would it be? And my only thought was that it would has to be building leadership. And leadership has to be multidimensional. Today, India has roughly 1.8 million restaurants for 1.3 billion people. So I don't really think we are that short of restaurants as we would like to believe. But whatever, uh, what is more concerning, I believe, is for the industry to understand is that we are rather less when it comes to an organized, being an organized industry, unlike the rest of the world, be it China, be it the US, be it other markets like Europe, where the organized industry's share is fairly large, ours is fairly less, which is 15%. But, you know, when we, I was researching um, about the organized industry, I also understood that there were just about 50 companies in all that had more than 100 restaurants. In fact, those 50 were also probably closing and opening more restaurants all the time. Less than one-tenth of the entire restaurants are branded in India. So which means, you know, it's nobody's bet where you're going to be eating tonight. Numbers talk differently to different people. When I was looking at these numbers which were put together by an NRAI report, um, you know, it, it gave me a very different sort of understanding of where this industry needs to be. Now, QSR sector is about 21% of uh, the entire industry. It stands at about almost close to 50,000 crores. Um, but in the last few years, what we've seen increasing in bulging are sectors like casual dining and cafes. Fine dining probably has reduced. Even QSR would have been reduced to a bit. But I realized that you know, more hybrid format of restaurants is what has really changed this entire numbers in this list that you see in front over here. So what, when I say hybrid formats, you know, they, they are formats of restaurants which have come between, I would say, um, family restaurants and fine dine restaurants, which you today call casual dining restaurants. And then there's another new format which is going to evolve, which is another sort of uh, hybrid restaurants, which is somewhere going to be between uh, casual dining and uh, quick service restaurants, which is your fast casual restaurants. So the bulge that you see in the middle, which is casual dining in cafes, it's only going to sort of either increase or it is going to sort of squeeze each other. So casual dining might actually come down and fast casual might go up and cafes would probably, you know, decrease some to give or make way for fast casuals. But what, what is really sort of uh, something that you need to take away from this table is that, you know, why do people go to these restaurants? I realized that for a quick service restaurant, people basically go there and keep going there because of the familiarity of the restaurant. That's the reason why customers and repeat customers would keep going to quick service industry because, you know, they're familiar, they know the food, they know the ambience, they know what to expect. On the contrary, people go to a casual dine or even to a fast casual for the thrill of it, for the frills that might actually be there in the restaurant. They, they go more for an adventure than really for eating. So the familiarity might not be there, which means the industry has to do all the more work in terms of building its customer and building its repeat customer loyalty. Uh, but, you know, I think... If we have to take really a cue from this sheet, what we really need to understand is that there is no leadership per se that exists today in the casual dining or the newly emerging formats. QSR, today if you're opening, today if you're a young restauranteur who is starting a QSR, believe you me, you know, there, 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 there are enough number of suppliers in this industry, there are enough number, there is enough leadership, there is enough people who can guide you, mentor you, and you'll, you'll be up and about in no time. That's because this industry has able to establish itself, not just in India, but globally. And there is enough leadership that exists, enough mentorship, enough resources, enough industry suppliers, which will help you grow very fast. But when it comes to casual dining and cafes and fast casuals, there is not enough work that has been done for the industry to prosper and really be growing in the direction that we need to see it growing, which is a concern for me, you know, because that till there is enough knowledge, till there is enough expertise that exists in the industry for the industry to grow, whether it is casual dine or fast casual or any other format, it will not happen. And, and you know, that is why we'll probably see more failures, we'll probably see restaurants opening, restaurants closing. 
that that needs some correction and that needs some leadership to happen in this industry at some stage if these formats really have to grow and prosper and more importantly grow large uh, this is what i feel is not so visible in the industry you know um, I, i i run the entrepreneur magazine so i follow the funding scene the the largely the you know capital movements very closely and i've realized that early funding practically doesn't exist in this industry angel funding there is no angel fund which i can say uh, would cater to i i know the indian angel network guys very closely and they've, they've only made probably just one in big investment in the food service sector while they made about five in the blockchain sector which is like a non existent sector across the world right now um so early funding doesn't exist but also more importantly vcpe funding doesn't exist to a big level it's in fact been drastically falling down in the last few years uh, restaurant valuations have not been that great as we would like to see them there's more bridge funding and there's more haircuts being taken in the industry then i would say big investment moving behind a high growth firm in the sector and that is not something uh, that is usually seen or that is something that is um uh, you know the or should be part or should be as a picture that should be seen in a sector which is otherwise very growth oriented i don't see unicorns coming out of restaurant business like i see in other sectors so you know so really i mean if you're entrepreneurial and you want to grow and you want to big a bill business in restaurants to become a unicorn um uh, yeah it's not going to happen or it's not going to come easy there's not so much fall in attrition you know attrition i've always felt is a function of the industry and where the industry is headed um why i feel attrition is more in this industry is because there is no sort of clear direction as to where the industry is growing a person who joins the industry doesn't know what his career looks like 5 years 10 years down the line if he's whether he's working in the restaurant or whether he's working in the organization Uh, so i think that is something that needs to be corrected uh, a clear direction building visibility for where your talent is going to be 5 years down the line in the industry is very important to pinpoint uh barring hotel chefs and probably chefs who are probably being more seen on television or uh you know uh, maybe uh, being celebrated in some other forms i don't see chefs being empowered in india to that extent you know restaurants are all about chefs casual dining is really all about the chef who is going to service that restaurant so they need to today be really acting like not just be known for their technical skills but really for their organizational skills on how they organize maybe one unit two unit three units that they are likely to manage in their career uh, so you know somewhere or the other i think they need to wear a ceo's cap in the restaurant and be looking beyond just their technical functions of or culinary functions um we need far more efficient supply chains locals have to be substituted with a more efficient more optimized supply chain because you know you cannot address hygiene you cannot address uh, good food uh, you know day on day being able to service your customer with the right food that he's looking at from your store till you have a good supply chain in place i barring a few large chains the 50s that i was talking about i don't see a very big supply chain um, being existing in the industry and most importantly i think there is no formal mentorship and incubation that one sees in this industry uh, as it should happen in a growing industry there are not enough mentors uh, who are really going to take your industry from level a to level b or level b to level c which exists which would be able to also help you in your funding drive which will be able to help you in your uh, organizational drive i don't see that and there is very little incubation in fact the first incubator i came to know was uh, yellow tie when we were doing uh, the franchise india show recently on tv so incidentally you know uh, when we were doing this consumer show which was the first ever tv show being done in india we realized that uh, about so the 50% people who really applied for the show were actually restaurant owners and there was only one company which came up which said that we are going to be tomorrow's incubator for restaurants so honestly all this doesn't exist and till it does not exist and come forward and be seen and visibly be seen this industry is not going to go anywhere big uh, 
until it organizes itself to the last mile. Every new restaurant here, first of all, when they open a restaurant or they think of expanding restaurants, need to put it all in place or put it all in order in order to grow.